Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Big Vale, and in today's video, we'll recap the Big Vale Invitational Final between Darkest Musan and Penta, where $1,000 was on the line. So both teams have had an epic journey to get to this point, collectively taking out multiple Ophelian esports teams, uh, HT Family, Unicorns of Love, MCES, and many more top tier teams. So. I mean, thinking back to the start of the uh, first season of BVI, we had some amazing matchups, some very solid teams involved. However, as great as it was, I don't feel it even came close to the quality that was on show in this season of the tournament. Between uh, teams like Queen Walkers, MCS, Space Station Gaming, Tribe Gaming, and of course Darkest Musan and Penta, all battling for the crown, this tournament will live long in my memory. So the tournament's been running for a couple of months now, and while I am sad that it's over, we've had an amazing war to end proceedings. So anyway, enough of the intro, let's get straight into the action. This is Darkest Musan versus Penta in the final of Big Fail Invitational Season 2. And we got a live one, guys. Darkest Musan are in. It's Shek going in on Muffin. So Shek kicking things off for Darkest Musan. He's coming in with a... Queen Charge? Oh, Warden Walk. Never mind. Super Witches. Someone asked, I think it was Merv said, we're going to see much Super Witch in here today. I think we probably are if we're starting off with one. So Shek takes out the top left side of the core with Zaps and Quakes. Almost a comprehensive takedown. Three key structures taken out already. So one Inferno is gone. And that was, I think, a single Inferno. I think. So Warden dropped in at 10 o'clock. He's going to snipe down all the external structures and Super Witches are going to drive in from 11 o'clock. We've got the King. Probably just a Naked King to drop in at uh, 10 uh, 12 o'clock. Sorry, we've got the Blimp pre-selected, which is a little bit confusing. I would have thought we'd have a Siege Barracks on the base like this, but I guess he's going to be taking a bl uh, the Blimp into one of the 3, 6 or 9 o'clock compartments. Curious to see what he does with that. Right, Super Witches are driving into the Town Hall. They've actually deviated towards a gold mine, but the Queen dropped in behind, does take out the gold mine. Super Witches can get the pathing set straight again, and they should be able to now move into the Town Hall with the uh, air defences and anchor to pull them in. King is over at 1 o'clock. He's working his way down towards 3. He's not going to deviate his pathing. He shouldn't go in towards the Multi Inferno at 3. Still holding on to that Blimp, Shek. What are you planning? What is Shek planning with this Blimp right now? He's got tons of pups in the air over the Town Hall, and that's kind of done him a favour. It's meant the Super Witches and the Queen held back, weren't impacted by the Gigabomb. So King continuing to work his way around, only a multi-inferno locked on, so when his ability goes off, it'll be naturally done, and he should survive quite nicely through ability. Blimp into the scatter shot at 9 o'clock. And I like what he did there. He dropped the Blimp in as the Super Witches were starting to approach, so he knew what path and knew what direction they were going to follow. He waited and made sure that where the blimp went, it was going to force some pathing, so the Super Witches did drive in towards the core. He's had one of them deviate with one healer following. That's maybe going to do him a favour. It'll mean that the outside at 9 o'clock will be cleared out naturally. Super Witches are in the core. multi Inferno locked onto those healers. Healers are taking a pounding right now. This one's starting to fall apart quite rapidly. The RC coming in from 2 o'clock takes out a multi Inferno. She'll take out everything in that area, and does have ability to get a little bit more value added in but we've got that multi inferno on the bottom left side of the core we've got the eagle still rocking through and we do of course have that warden god in the eagle warden just about to be taken down by the rc we're left with an rc a super witch and a baby dragon 25 seconds and we are looking at a two star here from Shek. he's going to need to maximize percentage at this point so any chance of a double perfect war rip that's gone that is gone now that's not gonna happen baby dragon picks up a salmon two red air bombs baby dragon goes down rc isn't gonna last too much longer surely rc's gone down too and the super witch and big boy are the only troops left with five seconds remaining it's gonna be an 87 percent two star from Shek. good try good try we don't vendetta's op okay anyone from inquisition is gonna be op though and of course, this was a last minute sub. Well, not last minute. I added uh, Vendetta into the uh, lineup for Penta quite late on in the tournament. Um, obviously, I allow changing around of roster quite frequently. I'm not too precious on that as long as they've not played for another team in the tournament. So perfectly legit to do so. So Muffin in with the Inferno Drag spam. I predicted not too much of this. So far, we've seen a Super Witch hit and an Inferno Drag hit in the first two attacks in the war. Is this going to be setting the tone for the rest of the war? I, I don't know. 
Sneaky goblins from the blimp take down the town hall. Guaranteed town hall takedown as long as they are protected well with barbs or something else coming out early to tank for any any uh, bombs or traps. We've got an archer at 3 o'clock pulling the headhunters, archers and the hound over to the side. Yeti goes down. We've got a Valk in behind the Yeti taking out the headhunters. So this hound takedown should be relatively straightforward. He's probably going to use an Inferno drag for it, I guess. But he's got... He's waiting, and I think it's because if he drops an Inferno Drag on the Hound now, the Yeti's going to keep pulling it wide. So now is the time to drop it. No, Queen. Okay. So he's going to invest the Queen in it. That, that, it's a bold play for me. I would have gone for an Inferno Drag and just... Uh, oh, he's... Yeah, there we go. Poison drop down early. Pups will go down, but I think the Inferno Drag still would have been the right play, personally. But I'm not Pentamuffin. I'm not a world beater like he is. I'm going to trust his judgment. Skelly spell goes down at 3 o'clock, just ahead of the king and queen, just to support the Sui. We've got the dragons and the loons moving in from 12 through to 1. Nado found very early over at 12 o'clock, right by a scatter shot. It's not going to impact it too much, though. Nothing was targeted under the Nado until the scatter shot got released. Took one shot at the balloons, then the free spell placed down nicely to protect the Inferno dragons moving over the scatter. Inferno dragons pushing on through towards the core. They've got a real nice narrow path through to the 9 o'clock side while the king and queen actually scratch that. The queen, the king's gone his own way. He's gone into the core. Queen is the one sticking to the outside. She's not going in towards the scatter, but she is staying on the outside, giving some cleanup options here. We've got the RC still to send in. A skelly spell and two freezes still to use, plus the king and queen ability tells me this is going to be an absolute wipe from Muffin. Beautiful three-star from Muffin on Shek. Shek, who came in with a relatively low percent two-star using Super Witches in the first attack of the war, is being punished by Muffin right now. So king ability goes off. RC is going to swag her ability, I believe. Yeah, it's going to be a swag RC ability. 35 seconds remaining. It was still swagged. Even if he used it, it was still a swag. And that is a triple with a swag free spell from Muffin. OP hit. And that just shows how strong Inferno Drags are. All right, we've got Zuriak in on Vendetta. Tam Tam gifting out a tier one sub. Thank you, Tam Tam. And that went to Dinga, Tam Tam, your OP. So Zuriak sending the blimp into the eagle. Raged up Yeti blimp. It's going to be an eagle takedown and a CC pull. Double-edged sword there from Zuriak. Queen dropped in at 4 o'clock. Baby dragon at 5. Queen should walk up and around here. Hound will go down to the queen. All headhunters are gone. I think there was only one or two headhunters anyway. Unfortunately for Zuriak, one of the healers was targeted by an archer tower. And that does mean we're down to four healers for the remainder of the attack. He's got to be careful he doesn't pick up any seeking air mines. Maybe wise to send in a Coco Loon towards the archer tower now. Just to add that little bit of tanking. Can the Queen pick off the RC on the way through? I feel like she may be able to if she goes to the left a little bit more. Oh, she's not going to. She's not going to pull the RC in. No big deal. It is a smash attack. So we've got Super Wizards, Peckers and Witches dropping in. Witches are down over at 1 o'clock. Right behind the King. So the King offering some tanking. The, the Witches spawning skeletons to tank against point defences. Now we've got the Peckers. We've got the Super Wizards in play. Queen... Just about holding on to her ability. Rage spell dropped in the nick of time for Zuriak. Everything's pushing through towards the core. What's going to be the town hall killer here? We've got one jump spell. It's going to have to be placed very strategically to give access to the town hall. Chain damage from the super wizards activates the town hall. I don't know if that was by design or accident. It wasn't the worst thing to have happened, although it did mean losing a couple of super wizards, but it did give us that earlier activation on the town hall for the RC to move in. Misplace on the freeze. Does freeze up the Tesla. It doesn't freeze up the town hall. Town hall does go down regardless. Queen is targeted by a scatter shot. Still targeted. Queen is going to go down soon. One more hit and she's gone. Ability goes off. She's protected through the ability. Scattershot is going to go down. Oh my gosh. He's actually going to pull this off. Somehow, this looks like it has potential to three star. He's got no healers though. He's got no healers. Two wizard towers, a bomb tower, tons of splash defense to get through. He's only got one witch over on the 10 o'clock side. Never mind guys. I called it a three star. It's quite evidently not going to be a three. He's got no hero abilities left. He's only got one witch. And even if she gets through the arch tower over at nine... She's got two wizard towers plus a bomb tower to get through. Queen will take out one of the wizard towers. The cannon, if it locks on, will finish her off. This is closer than it had any right to be, but it's not going to be a three-star from Zuriak. It's going to be another 
Two star, not a bad percent, 88%. Will rise to possibly 90, but it won't get any higher than that. Good try from Zuriak. It's another two star from Darkest Musan. Wow. Wow. So Penta really are in the driver's seat right now. Penta with a golden opportunity to walk away with a win here. If they can triple out the next attack, that's a two star lead, two attacks in. So we've got Zakia in on way. Zakia with a Queen Charge hybrid. Okay. I'm waiting for Jack to react to that. <laughs> All right, Zakia, Queen Charge hybrid. He's got, okay, a decent split actually. He's got a blimp pre-selected. Is it going to stay that way? Zap hybrid. Okay, I did not notice the lightning. This is a lesser used variant of hybrid. Still very effective. And you can see with those zaps and quakes, he's already created a, a decent enough pathing. He's sending in the blimp to finish off the top sides of the base. It's quite a large segment, so I understand why he felt he needed the zap and the blimp to do the job. He drops his queen into play. He's going to get the queen to work away down and around towards 9 o'clock. Queen battling with a headhunter does win that battle overall. Hound moves in. He's got the poison. He'll hold on to that for a few more seconds until the hound's about to pop. Drop that poison right on top of the queen. That should protect her and the healers from taking too much damage from the pups. And then the queen has got a clear path to work down towards the town hall. What else have we got? So we've got Sneaky Goblin, Sneaky Goblin. Oh, okay. So he is going to break the queen into the town hall here. Two super wall breakers. Sneaky Goblin's dropped in at 9 o'clock is a massive giveaway for that. So he's got great clearance at 9. Queen's going to work her way down. Super wall breakers are probably going to go in i was going to say after the archer tower goes down but he's going to do it the uh the higher investment way so both super wall break is going to be used to get into the town hall compartment second one when does it get dropped in wouldn't be the worst idea to drop it in sooner rather than later but it gets dropped in now queen will easily move in oh no he was locked onto by the eagle they won't go down but they'll be left with very very low hp we're looking at like two hp or something per healer so any red air bombs should finish off all of those healers in one foul swoop queen gets the town hall down got the hybrid moving in from one two o'clock pushing in towards the core queen's about to go down don't have the eternal tome anymore that was used very early on approaching the scatter shot we've got one multi on the six o'clock side king is working his way around there clearing out the trash so that will mean the hybrid troops do stay uh, Focus on the job at hand. We've got the RC ability still. Free spell still to use. Can he get this? I think so. He's got the queen ability in hand. 55 seconds to do it. This is looking like a wipe from Zakia. Beautiful example of a queen charge hybrid. Queen doesn't move in on the defending RC, but the attacking RC does. He's got it, guys. He's got it. He's got queen and RC ability in hand. He's still got a wizard to drop in if he chooses to do so. He doesn't even really need it. And a free spell that does get dropped onto the single once that single locks on and starts heating up on the RC. RC will move over to the single momentarily. And that will be a triple from Zakia, making it two for two from Penta. So after two attacks, that's six stars to four in favour of Penta. Okay, we've got KLY in on GK Tim. So KLY with a... Okay, okay, we've got a Sui Lalo from KLY. I'm all for this. I'm all for this. And this is where you have a little bit of an edge watching a war that uses the old ESL format. So a one hour, ba uh, one hour battle day with 40 minutes uh, attack start. So it gives you 20 minutes to prep and plan. KLY's had plenty of time to come up with this. I'm expecting something pretty special here. So King's going to get driven into the town hall. He's got one skeleton spell. One skeleton spell. I'm guessing that's going to maybe tank for the Lolo on the fly somewhere. He's got the core multi to worry about. This is the kind of base that, if I'm honest, I would probably avoid when doing a Lalo. So, really curious to see how KLY's plan to take this one down. Town Hall is crushed. Queen ability already burnt, so she's going to go down as she approaches the king. So that's all the value he's going to get from his king and queen. He still has the RC to send in. Whether that comes in with the Lalo or whether it's sent in standalone. So, standalone, it's going to pull all of those CC troops down south. And I don't think we've got a full CC pull here. We've got a ton of archers. We've got some skeletons. But where's the rest of them? RC is not going to get much value here. The RC ability will go off. Take out the air defense. Damage the scatter. But CC troops, thanks to a misplaced poison, will hold the RC in place and the scatter will finish the job. So now the Lalo comes in from 12 o'clock. Hound's pushing through to three. We've still got the core multi up. 
We've got no siege machine to use. Of course, we used the blimp a little bit earlier on. Uh, Stone Slammer, sorry. Oh, wait, Stone Slammer. What was I thinking of? What am I talking about, guys? Loon's pushing through. We've got the core multi. Still going to be a problem. He's got the Eternal Tome. Eternal Tome goes off soon. It does go off soon. Right in the core where we've got a ton of red air bombs. That was really well played from KLY, actually. I'm impressed that he had the wherewithal to hold on to the Eternal Tome, pushing through to that compartment. Having said that, I'm still not sure we're looking at a three-star here. He's still got the scatter shot up. Scatter shot locks onto the balloons. Does it get a shot off? It does, but it fires at a pub for some reason. Okay, KLY is getting a little bit of luck in his favor right now. Stone Slam is about to pop. I eat my words, guys. This is looking like a triple. KLY has pulled this out of nothing. So despite what was essentially a swag RC... He should be walking away with a 3-star here. Nado holds the balloons in place on the left side of the core. We've got a Tesla. And that Tesla's gone. Nothing air targeting remaining. 30 seconds to go. The King is holding some pups and minions in place on the top side of the core. But there's only 1% left to get. And that is about to go down. KLY with a 3-star for Darkest Musan. Does give them a sort of a foothold in the war. Okay. We've got Vendetta in on... Number two, I I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Jay Lethal, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Vendetta in on number two. Queen Charge Hybrid. Queen dropped in at 2.30. We've got the Yeti Blimp taking out the two o'clock compartment in the core. Okay. Okay, so he's building up to something here. Queen's going to work away down towards six. I think he's getting the Queen to squeeze in towards the right-hand scatter shot. And then naturally path through to the Town Hall. The only risk I see here is if the healer pathing... Goes a little bit awkward and the healers get into range of the multi infinity. Is that even possible? Maybe not. Maybe not. He should be okay. But definitely something to keep an eye on. Rage dropped on the queen and healers. CC pulled out. We've got a ton of goblins, headhunters, and that's it. So no tanky troops to follow in from behind. Poison and a freeze spell go down on the headhunters. Headhunters do go down. Super Warbreaker moves in behind the queen. Weirdly targets an open wall. Interesting. Don't know why it didn't move in towards the multi. Second wall breaker does go towards the multi though. So this isn't going to be a queen takedown of the town hall. This is going to be the queen getting deep into the base. Taking out the core. He's got no rage spells left after this one. So once he gets in towards the multi. He's going to have to battle the king and the RC using the queen ability alone. It's an auto protecting the hybrid troops moving through the town hall. Everything stays alive. RC hanging on to ability. Queen hanging on to ability. But she will need to use that soon I'm sure once the king steps up. We've got a freeze and a heal still to use. Can this one triple? If Vendetta can triple, that is another nail in the coffin of Darkest Musan in this final. That'll be three from three for Penta. It's looking pretty good so far. Freezes up the scatter shot. Queen takes down the king, takes down the eagle, takes down the wizard tower. Oh my gosh. This is going to be another triple from Penta. Nothing can stop these guys. Are these guys one of the best in the world? You can see why they're ranked so highly according to the Competitive Clash Network. They are on fire lately. And rightly so. I mean, they're making it through to the final of the Big Bale Invitational. We had teams like Queen Walkers. We had Tribe, Space Station Gaming. Um, for a very brief time, Nishang Dance. We had some incredible, incredible teams in this tournament. And Penta or one of the soul, one of the survivors, I was going to say soul survivors, they may be by the end of this war, but they are one of the survivors making it through to the final. These guys are ridiculously good. And another three star, that is three from three for Penta, nine stars to seven. Okay, so number two in on Zakir. So we need another triple from Darkest Musan to keep them in the game. If we get a two star here, I'm sorry to say, but I feel like Penta have probably won this already. So Queen dropped in with an Ice Golem tanking over at 3 o'clock. He's coming in with a uh, straight-up Dragloon. Straight-up Dragloon. He's got two Zap spells. I suspect he's going to use them on the Sweeper. Don't know why he's not used them yet, though. So Queen finds a Nado. She gets through it. She'll take out the Elixir Collector. Will she leave the Air Defense alone? Typical. Yes, she will. But the RC now comes in behind. Defending Queen is going to get wiped by the attacking Queen. One, two, three shots and she is gone. So that Eagle compartment is going to go down. I'm not sure if the intention was always to send the RC in, in, into that compartment. I don't know whether it may have been better to send the King in. But I'm sure he's got a plan for funneling for the King. So E-Drag dropped in at 6 o'clock. Couple of balloons tanking. He's looking to try and make some headway in towards the air defence planted at 6. 
RC goes down to the single inferno. Now the dragons and wounds can start to push into the town hall. Air defense at six about to go down. Freezes up the single and the town hall. Preemptive freeze on the town hall, but the single had already locked onto a dragon, heating up. CC pulled out. And it's only a partial pull, so that tells me we've probably got a hound in the CC. Best to keep that king away from the clan castle before it's taken out by the dragons. Two multis in the base, so no singles left to worry about. Clan castle's gone down, king can go wherever the hell he wants now. We've got two rages, we've got one freeze, an invisi, and a poison still to use. Rage gets dropped down on the dragons. They're going to move north towards the right-hand scatter, freeze on the scatter, and warden. This is looking like a good hit so far from number two. Can he pull through the rest of the attack and get that three star that Darkest Musan so, so need? He's still got the invisibility in hand. What was the plan for the invisibility? I almost feel like it should have been used with the RC earlier in the attack. Or maybe even the Queen, just to get that little bit of extra value. Having said that, he's got one, two E drags still up. He's dropped the Invisi to protect this big batch of dragons moving through the multi and air defense. Despite. Maybe one or two mistakes being made in this attack. It's still looking like he's going to walk away with a triple. Only a Warden and Air Targeting Expo to get through. He's got a Dragon on about 50% health. The E-Drag's moving in to support as well. I think he's got it, guys. This is looking like a three-star of a Swag Poison from number two. GG. That was just what Darkest Musan needed. They are still, of course, behind in this war. But if Penta were to two-star the next attack, Darkest Musan are still in with a chance here. And that's a big if because Penta so far are flying three from three. We've seen three stars coming in from Muffin, Vendetta, and Zakia. So hits still to come from GK Tim and Louis. Let's see what we can do, guys. And it's GK Tim in on Zuriak. GK Tim coming in with a Super Witch hit. Okay, we've seen one Super Witch hit so far in this war, and it was a fail from Darkest Musan. So standard setup, he's got five zaps and a quake, he's got four super witches, siege barracks this time. So this is where it differs from the attacks we saw earlier on. Earlier on, I believe we saw a blimp with the super witches. Uh, it's not a winning combination, apparently. This is more of a tried and tested method. He's probably got hogs or valks in the siege barracks. Uh, Ive would work. So there's a lot of trash on the outside, so valks would be great for cleanup. Hogs, of course, great for getting deeper into the base, tanking for the RC. Zap, Quake down on the multi inferno on the right side of the call. Warden over at 2 o'clock. He's going to snipe down everything in the 3 o'clock area. Probably not including the scatter shot though. He's had 25 seconds of the attack gone so far. He doesn't want to wait too much longer before dropping the super witches in. They're a slow, slow burner. And if you don't get a really kind split on them, you do risk a very serious uh, time fail. So Queen gets dropped in, pulls the Warden up. So it isn't going to be a case of investing the Warden into the scatter shot. That would have been a little bit of a stretch too far. Super Wall Breaker moves in, opens up the Town Hall compartment. Is the Tesla farm over at 12 going to cause a pathing issue here? Apparently not. Balloons dropped in to mitigate against that. The King also helping out with the Siege Barracks. Looking good so far. So GK Tim, known as one of the best players in Germany, by the way. Pushing his super which is in towards the core. Jump spell dropped preemptively. It lasts for quite some time, so not a big deal doing that. He's got a rage and a freeze still to use. He's got the RC to drop in when the siege barracks empties out, and it is going to be a Valk CC. So it's Valks coming in for cleanup. I think in hindsight, maybe Hogs would have actually been better in this position. But he's going to drop the RC in, I guess, from 9 o'clock to help out with the Valks while they've got some degree of tanking. In fact, all the Valks are gone. They didn't get any value at all. So definitely, I think Hogs would have been the right call there. Hindsight, wonderful thing. We've still got the Queen ability, still have the RC ability in hand. Queen and RC are working together. We've got Super Witches in the core. Great news for GK Tim is, it, Tim is that there's only one Inferno left, and it's a multi-Inferno. So not going to cause too much of an issue for these Super Witches. We've got the RC almost having her ability forced. She's stepping up. Expo goes down before doing so. Air defense down. How long can she hold on to that ability for? Can the Wizard Tower go down before it goes off? Oh my gosh, it can. Is this RC ability ever going to get used? There we go. RC ability goes off. Damages the Wizard Tower. Damages the cannon. We've got 45 seconds to go. That's plenty of time to walk away with a triple here. Penta are killing it today. Four from four from Penta. 12 stars from four attacks. Only one more to go to make it. They're 
well, another perfect war. They're the only one of the only teams, one of the only teams to perfect in this tournament so far. Can they start and end with a perfect war? Their first perfect war was their first matchup against Zepto. Can they do it again against Darkest Musan? If anyone can, Penta can. GK Tim clutching it up for 12 starts for Penta with one attack to go. Way on Louis coming in with a Queen Charge hybrid. So Super Warbreaker dropped in at 9 just to open up the multi Inferno compartment. Queen at 9.30, Yeti at 10. So Queen should be able to step down towards the multi here. A couple of balloons dropped onto the Arch Tower at 8. Queen will work away down. He's got five healers to drop onto the Queen. He's got no jump spell. I would have expected the jump spell here to try and get the Queen to hop the wall from the multi in towards the Town Hall. Maybe even open up the uh, lower scatter shot too. That's what I would have done, but this is Wei. I, I'm not going to try and pretend that I know better than Wei. The guy is a beast. So Queen working through towards the multi inferno at 9 o'clock. Balloon helping out. No seeking air mines found. And the Queen's going to be allowed to naturally walk back outside again. So Gold, uh, Dark Elixir Storage will pull the Queen out. And she's going to work her way down towards the Eagle Artillery. Interesting pathing that Wei's creating for a hybrid here. So Queen still with ability. Massive pressure on her though. Two Expos and a Cannon all locked on. That'll be for a prolonged period of time. The Expo here has range and it's still locked onto her. He's got one Rage left. He's not really wanting to have to use it yet. Hybrid now moves in from 10 o'clock. King at 12. Where's the Siege Barracks coming in? Siege Barracks goes in at 1 o'clock behind a Giant. Giant dropped into Tank to make sure the Cannon didn't lock onto the Siege initially. Now he's going to get a slow, steady run of Wizards dropping out of the Siege Barracks in behind the Pekka. He'll have some Hogs probably coming in to join in the party. Eternal Tome's gone off. Hybrid protected through the Town Hall. He's still got both scatters up. The King is working on one of them, but he's got into its safe zones. So the top scatter did turn its attention temporarily to the hybrid troops. Queen still rocking through the base. Has burned her ability now, but she's got healers locked on still. May be able to survive a little bit longer, but with an Expo and the Eagle locked on, how much more value can this Queen add? Uses the freeze to protect the hybrid troops rather than keeping the Queen alive. That may have been a mistake from Wei. That Queen needed protection. She's... Not managed to finish the eagle off, but the RC does. RC steps up, finishes the eagle. We've still got a pecker, we've still got hogs. Can the RC get to the single inferno before the hogs die off? No, but can this single still go down? Single does go down. 37 seconds to go. We're going to get a three star from Wei. To make it so Penta actually do have something to do in the final attack. Penta do have something to do. Not a great deal, but they've got something. Three star from Wei. So Louis in on KLY. Is there a fellow streamer I would like to collab with but haven't yet? Yeah, I'd love to collab with Carbon, to be honest. I'd love to do that. Louis in on KLY. Carbon or Eric, I think, are my two that I would definitely pick from. Louis, Super Witches. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a safe option. So I guess with Super Witches, you're always going to get the two start. That's always going to be the bare minimum and that's all Penta needs. So the guys can probably start celebrating right now. <sighs> but we'll see. We'll see. We're not going to call it a win before it's a win. So Warden dropped in at six. Warden's finishing off whatever the Zap Quake didn't. The Witches are going to get dropped in ahead of the Warden over at uh, five o'clock and we're probably going to get the King and Siege Barracks dropped in somewhere around three. It looks good. I've got to say it looks good. It looks like a solid plan. He's got a single Inferno on the back end to worry about. Multi-Inferno in the middle, right between the Infernos, not too much of a concern for Louis. The King dropped in at three. He's going to work his way up and around. Siege Barracks will have to get dropped in at some point nearby. And I'm guessing on this occasion, it's definitely going to have Hogs involved. He's got a minute and 50 seconds left. Super Witch has only just dropped into play. He's dicing with death here. Well, not really. Two stars is all it takes. But, you know, we want a three star, don't we, guys? We want a three star from Louis at this point. So Queen Super Witch is pushing up towards the Town Hall. Time could be a factor here. He's got a minute and a half remaining. 65% left to get through. He's got one jump spell, one rage, one freeze. He's got two infernos, one multi, one single. Both scatters to get through still. Jump spell, where's it going down? Ooh, nice placement. Really nice placement. Connects up everything in the core. 
Looking good so far from Louis. He's got some cleanup on the outside in the name of Valks moving in from the Siege Barracks. Those Valks are going to come in clutch here. They'll definitely help to stave off any risk of a time fail, or at least some of the risk of a time fail. Hound in the middle pops, so the pup's going to have to be dealt with by Super Witches and the Queen. And that is, yeah, that's happening. Pups are all gone. We've got no pups left in the core. Single Inferno trying to take out everything that comes across it. Queen's been locked onto. Freezes it up before the Queen has to burn ability. He's got 47 seconds remaining. Queen and RC ability in hand. I'm not going to say he's got it, guys, but I think he's got it. I think he's walking away with a triple here. I think Louis is giving Penta the perfect war against Darkest Musan in the final of the Big Bale Invitational Tournament for $1,000. Louis, what a guy, what a god, gets it, nowhere near a time field, the Valks coming in from the siege barracks absolutely stopped that from happening, they got a ton of extra value, and we got it guys, we've got the perfect war, enter, enter, clutching it up with a 15-13 win over Darkest Musan in the final of the BVI. What an amazing performance from both teams and such a fitting way for the tournament to end with a perfect war from Penta. They started the tournament with a perfect war against Zepto, finished it with a perfect war against Darkest Musan. Genuinely the stuff that dreams are made of and a big thank you from me to both teams for bringing out their A game and putting on a show for all of you guys. So that's basically it for Big Bale Invitational Season 2. Um, we are going to be planning a Season 3 sometime over the next couple of months. Watch this space. And if you would like to be kept up to date with that, plus any other community events that I run, including Project BVOP, where me and my community are farming up brand new accounts together um, in a brand new clan. We're doing CWL together at the moment, which is uh, interesting. We're also going to be doing challenges in there, and it is a YouTube exclusive, so if you want to get yourself uh, YouTube famous, then... By all means, drop into my Discord that's linked in the description. Drop a follow on Twitch, uh, and you'll be able to interact live with me and my viewers. Uh, but yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the war. Hope you enjoyed the video. That is all from me for now. So much love, and Big Vale is out.